Hey there, Hobby Warriors. Merry Christmas to everyone that celebrates, and if you don't celebrate Christmas, Happy Holidays. Uh, so in today's video, we are going to paint four boxes of Solar Auxilia Infantry. And so the style that I'm going for is super simple, very, very quick. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on these because infantry miniatures at this scale, you can't focus your eyes on them from a meaningful gaming distance away. Uh, so it's going to be a very basic paint job, but we are going to use an enamel wash to help pick out all of the detail that is sculpted here uh, so that if you wanted to do a little miniature photography or show it off to your friends uh, they still will look very good um, close up now you're not going to win you know a slayer sword or a golden demon or anything like that but they will get done very very quickly and uh, they'll look very nice at a good tabletop standard now, we are going to spend a little bit more time on the larger figures, uh, namely the Aethon Heavy Sentinels. And uh, before we actually get into the painting video, uh, I've got a couple of announcements. So, first up, today is the announcement day for the 1K Celebration Giveaway for Lionel Johnson. We'll be announcing that winner at the end of the video, so make sure you... Uh, watch the whole thing and stay to the end find out if you won and then also i had stealth enabled uh youtube memberships um i was waiting to make a formal announcement until you know after the holiday season probably in january and one legend has already joined uh so mr roland lucas uh, thank you so much. Um, that that really means the world to me. And uh, if anyone else is interested, um, so there's going to be three tiers. The first tier gives you access to some special emojis and um, highlight your comments so that I can see them. And I'll be giving membership priority to comments, even though I try to respond to everyone when I can. The second tier will get you early access to most of my videos that I drop. Uh, any sort of like announcement videos won't fall into that because I need to get that out to everybody as quickly as possible. But all of my regular content, like the painting and hobby videos, uh, you'll get those before everybody else. And then I'm working on a Discord channel that will be open to everyone. But people who support me at that third tier will have a private uh, channel where you can talk directly to me and other people in that tier uh, and get, you know, priority comments over there as well. Uh, so once the Discord server is ready to go, I'm kind of working on the rules and permissions right now. I'll announce that in a future video. Uh, but without further ado, that's enough rambling. Let's get to paint. All right, so before we get into the painting proper, I did want to go through how I prepared everything. Uh, so here is the, the sprue. And as you'll notice, I've already taken off the Sentinels, the Ogrens, and then some of the more problematic sculpts. Uh, so for instance, the uh, Legate Commanders, who have the sweeping cloaks, and then all of the banner guys, uh, as well as the scribe people. Uh, I forget their, their actual name in the game. Uh, so I went ahead and clipped them all off, stuck them down on popsicle sticks. Now, I was worried about using super glue, uh, just because of how strong the bond is compared to how fragile these miniatures are. So what I ended up doing was using some double-sided craft tape, uh, very, very thin, uh, so there wasn't a whole lot of tackiness to it, and it's just enough hold to keep the miniatures down on the po uh, popsicle sticks, but you can very easily just go ahead and peel 
the guy off of there once you're done, but they'll take a little pressure and won't move on you while you're painting. Uh, so the other thing to note is that on the guys that I left on the sprue, I removed the vertical bits of sprue uh, that would get in the way while I was attempting to paint. Um, that's going to be very, very helpful for you guys. And this is honestly probably the most efficient way to go about doing this. Uh, initially, I was putting all of my infantry on popsicle sticks and very quickly decided that if I kept doing it, I was going to go insane. So don't be me. Uh, do what I say, not what I did. And just leave most of the infantry on the sprue, remove those vertical bits, and then all of the bigger guys, uh, of which there aren't that many, you can go ahead and put those guys on popsicle sticks. All right, so let's start with the ogrens. Uh, so first up, I'm covering the cloth on the arms and legs with Bearing Blue by Scale 75. And I'm trying to avoid the armor plugs uh, that are coming out of the suit and leave those in their metallic color. Next, we're going to come in with Scale 75 Elven Gold, and we're going to apply this to the connections where the weapons meet the arms, as well as the tanks uh, that the Ogrens have on their backs. Right, and the last color on the Ogrens, we're coming in with Black Legion Contrast Paint, and uh, any tubing that you want to be rubber, I'm giving that a coat with this color. Now, I'm only doing the tubes attached to the arms, but you could do more of them if you wished. Alright, so with the Ogrens out of the way, let's start working on those Sentinels. Uh, so, the main armor of the Sentinel, I'm coming back to Bearing Blue from Scale 75. And you want to make sure that not only do you hit the front of the model, but you also get the side of the, the cockpit module as well. And I'm avoiding any of the lattice metalwork that's sort of acting like a cage around the cockpit. Right, and next we're using Aldebaran Red from Scale 75. And we're just going to use this on the tips of the missiles. And moving right along, we're going to go to Elven Gold. And we're going to hit any of the rivets in the joints on the Sentinel in this color. And the last bit for the Sentinels, we're going to go ahead and use Basiliconum Gray contrast paint on the uh top weapon all right so now for all of our human infantry there's going to be a lot of steps here uh, we're going to start out with black legion contrast paint and any of those unsightly undercuts we're going to go ahead and coat with this paint uh, mercifully there aren't that many of them the most egregious ones are on the flamer sections uh, and there's a couple others scattered, but uh, most of those aren't too bad. All right, next up, we're going to use Contrast uh, Basiliconum Gray on all of the guns uh, that any of the miniatures are holding. Uh, that includes the flamers, the um, pistols that the various sergeants and so forth are holding, as well as the uh, Volkites that are in the command squad. All right, next we're coming in with Scale 75 Elven Gold, and we're gonna hit the sword hilts, um, any vexillas uh, that are scattered around the top of the banner poles uh, as well. And then we're also gonna dot this into the uh, what I'm calling the, the battery packs for all of the weapons, as well as coating the 
uh, front part of the flamers. All right, so now we're going to use scale 75 Dubai Brown, and we're going to use this to coat all of the halves of the um, storm section power axis. All right, so next up we've got scale 75 Aldebaran Red, and we're using this on any of the cables, uh, mostly on the, the flamer section as well as the helmet crest on the captains. All right, so next we're going to go back to bearing blue, again by scale 75, and we're going to use this on all of the shoulder pads uh, as an accent color for the force, and then on most of our captain models, uh, we're going to go ahead and paint their cloaks and this color, as well as some of the other Command Squad uh, figures that have cloaks, they're all going to get coated with this color. But I'm going to save two of those captains for later. We're going to paint their cloaks slightly differently so that we can differentiate between the two types of command stands. Right, and some of the miniatures have holsters or uh, waist pouches, satchels. Uh, so we're going to paint any of those in scale 75 red leather. Right, so now we're going to use scale 75 Iraco, and we're going to use this to coat the banner cloth as well as any visible insides of any capes as well as the parchment that's on the one command model. Uh, I don't know exactly what they're called, but it has some sort of uh, logicator device that's like spooling out parchment. Uh, we're going to go ahead and coat all of the parchment uh, with this color as well. All right, so those two commanders that we had set aside, uh, we're going to go ahead and color their cloaks in with scale 75 violet. Um, now, you could use whatever color you would like for your commander. Uh, I honestly, I just chose this on a whim, and I think it looks pretty good. All right, so next we're going to use Scale 75 Arctic Blue. And we're going to use this on the sashes, for lack of a better word, that the command uh, models have. Uh, just go ahead, it might take two coats of this. Uh, but just go ahead and try and get some nice coverage over that chrome. And the last acrylic step for these guys, their little tactical rock bases that they're standing on. I'm going to color those in with scale 75 brown gray. Now, I'm using this color because it's part of the color mix that's on my bases. Uh, what I would recommend is that whatever color your bases are, you utilize either your mid-tone or slightly darker than your mid-tone since these are going to be shadow areas uh, to cover those bits with. All right, so all of our infantry, I've let the acrylics cure uh, for about a day. Uh, that's really all you need uh, before you hit these with an enamel wash as long as you've used a pretty good quality primer. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and wash everything. So with the Ogrens and the rest of the infantry, we're going to use this ammo uh, paneline wash, blue-black. Um, I tried a few different washes, and I just really liked the way uh, this one turned out on my test models. And so for this process, just want to soak your brush with a little bit of... Uh, odorless uh, mineral spirits then load up your brush and you could dab a little bit of the excess off on a palette and then we're just gonna slap this all over the miniatures you want to work this into all of the crevices on the mini so that we get really nice shading and so the benefit here is that this will run 
into those crevices a lot better than an acrylic wash would without staining the higher surfaces too, too much. And so the reason why I like the blue-black is most shadows in real life have a touch of blue to them. Uh, and it also works with the, the blue of my color scheme. So after you get this applied on all of your minis, you're going to want to let this cure for about a day if you plan to uh, hit them with a varnish afterwards just to kind of increase the durability of the paint job. Uh, if you're not worried about uh, top coating these, I'd say overnight's probably fine before you'd want to start playing with them and get them on their bases. So I'm going to finish these up and then we'll move on to the walkers. All right, so for the Sentinels, I'm thinning down a little bit of dark streaking grime from Ammo. And this is sort of the consistency that I'm going for. So you can see it's a little bit heavier than the panel line wash that we used on the infantry. And that'll help this nestle into all of the, the detail on the walkers. But it's pretty much the same idea. We're just going to slap this all over. And you kind of want to get... Work this all into every single nook and cranny on the miniature. And this color, it's kind of a, a dark green, uh, very close to black, but tinted green. Uh, and it works really, really well if you're ever needing to shade something that was kind of working in a dirty environment. Just like that. Don't forget to hit the insides of the legs and the back. And just make sure it's not pulling too heavily on the the front of the uh, the cockpit. But we'll go ahead and let these dry, and then we'll be ready for the final details. All right, so we're at the home stretch now. We've got everything painted and matte varnished. And uh, before we get into the final details, I just wanted to show you what everything looks like at this stage uh now these cool little basing bits i've got like supply crates and some sandbag emplacements on some of the bases uh if you're interested in finding out where i got those uh you can check out my adeptus titanicus video uh basing video rather that's linked up in the cards um i had originally bought these uh, for my Titanicus Titans, and I had some left over, and I figured this was a perfect opportunity to go ahead and plop those down and fill in some of that empty space on the bases. But now for the final details, so on the Sentinels, you've got some cockpit glass uh, there, and then you got some really tiny little targeting lights down there. And then I wanted all of my commander figures uh, to have their power swords activated. So we're going to be using the ammo crystal paints uh, that if you've been following along with my Legions Imperialis videos, uh, you'll know that I use these quite a bit. And so to prepare for that, we're going to want to reapply that Vallejo Chrome. Uh, to all of those areas. So we're going to hit the, again, the power swords on our commanders, uh, the cockpit glass, the lights, and then this little 
special guy for the command squad. He's got like a little targeting like search lamp auspex thing. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but we're going to hit that as well. All right, so we're going to start off on those power swords, and we're going to use this uh, ammo crystal light blue. Uh, thanks to movie magic, I chromed all of these off screen already. And all you need to do is just apply a coat of this over the blade of the sword and make sure that you hit both sides and the blue color is pigmented enough that should be able to get away with just one coat but if you happen to uh, want the effect to be a little bit more intense you want some more color on the blade just let this dry completely and then you can come back in and do a second coat it, and then for the Auspex guys, we're going to come in with Crystal Periscope Green. And same deal here. Just load up your brush. And just drop this on just like that. And again, this is another fairly heavy pigmented uh, crystal color. So one coat should do it, but if you're not quite happy, just let that dry completely and then you can come in and do a second coat. Now while we still have that on our palette, I'm going to do the cockpit glass on the Sentinels in the same color. So again, just drop this right onto the cockpit. Now, if it runs like it did on here because of the shape of it, just dry off your brush and you can soak that up from out of the recess at the bottom. Now we're going to come in with Ammo Crystal Red and we're going to get those targeting lamps uh, down at the bottom of the Sentinel cockpit. And the red is a very highly pigmented color so you should just need one pass to get really good coverage on that and it looks like my camera was struggling to focus so I will do that one more time And there we go. And last but not least, I forgot about Telescope Guy. Uh, so we're going to use the Crystal Red on the end of the Telescope Glass as well. This is actually probably the best model to showcase the effect. But just as easy as that, you got really awesome looking glass. Here you can see the power sword effect with the crystal blue and then the periscope green on Auspex guy and then on the Sentinel. Actually, he's a bad example. Here we go. You've got the periscope green on the cockpit and then the little red light uh, underneath. Uh, now, very quickly, I realized I completely breezed over how I did the bases. I actually have a separate video for that up in the cards. I'll go ahead and link that. But I'm going to go away, finish basing all of the rest of my minis, and then I'll come back and give you my final thoughts. All right, so here are the completed four uh, infantry boxes for the Solar Auxilia. Uh, that's a grand total of 416 miniatures. And it took me roughly about a week. And you figure I was only taking a couple of hours in the evening uh, every day to work on these. And then I was also filming this video. 
at the same time. So if you're not doing this for YouTube, you could probably knock out as many boxes as you wanted uh, in a matter of days. Uh, I will say I am pretty pleased with the larger miniatures. So the Sentinels, I think, turned out really, really well. Uh, that armor is nice and dirty, uh, but you could still pick out the details. And the Ogrens, in my opinion, look really, really good uh, for the scale. Now, the basic infantry guys, you know, these are so tiny, they were never going to look great. Um, but I think with the simple paint job, but the enamel uh, wash to bring out what detail is there, uh, these look passable. I'm okay with it. Now, I did want to point out a couple of things. So for the command squads, uh, you'll notice I did not use the Volkite gunners. Uh, I left those still on the sprue and I'm saving them. And the reason being, uh, there's one solar auxilia unit that hasn't been released yet and uh, has a 28 millimeter equivalent. And that's the Volkite uh, Velotaris sections. So I just went ahead and used the spare commanders, uh, to fill in the, the empty spaces. And then everybody got a telescope guy. Uh, so it's four figures on the base instead of five, but I figured I can save those Velotaris models and bulk out that squad whenever it inevitably gets released. Also, uh, because for the Solar Auxilia, your types of commanders matter. So my two Supreme Commander bases got a purple base rim, and then my Tactical Commanders just got a gray rim. So I'll be able to pick those out on the table fairly easily, uh, since all of the details are kind of small. All right, so next order of business, since it is Christmas Day, it is uh, time to give away Lionel Johnson. So the winner, and I'm gonna have to try and find a drum roll sound effect, is Julie R. from Cole City in the USA. Uh, congratulations, and thank you so much for checking us out. I will be in touch. I'll shoot you an email uh, later today and get your delivery information and we'll get this uh, in the post for you. And uh, since it's Christmas, we might throw in a couple of extra goodies. But uh, that's it for today's video, guys. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you like the, the painting technique that I used or if you have any suggestions of your own, uh, as well as I'm kind of debating what I want to do next. So we can either work on Legion's Imperialis terrain, or we can do uh, some night banners, or we can even do a uh, War Master Titan. So uh, let me know what you guys want to see down in the comments. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday if you celebrate it. And I'll catch you in the next video.